Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another E3 Reactions video of Marky B's Gaming C. Now in today, I am um, going to be showing you some reactions to the Ubisoft conference, which again, I think they absolutely smashed this one out of the park. I really, really enjoyed it. It was a very long conference. It was just a little over two hours long and um, I thought they had lots to show us, lots of gameplay, um, lots of information and we're going to get it started with a brilliant opener. Well, not the first opener. They opened up very briefly with their new Just Dance. They always have these kind of stage setups um, throughout their conference somewhere where everyone's just dancing and flailing around and, you know, to a song or something like that. And they were dancing to Queen's Don't Stop Me Now. It's really cheesy, but thankfully it was very quick. It was right at the start of the show and they got that shit out the doors early on. So, um... Yeah, that, that was that was their opener, but their official really cool game that I was super excited about was this one. Now, you may remember our next title from the end of last year's show when it blew your fucking mind. Oh, Ghost Recon. And if you're at home playing a drinking game, yes, an F-bomb in the first five minutes of this show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Ghost Recon Wildlands. This is gonna... Ooh, I got goosebumps. <clears throat> this will be a game changer for, for Ubisoft, hopefully, anyway. I think they'll do this justice. This is going to be so good. <clears throat> Here we go. The intel we need is supposed to be in this Sicario's house. Looks like it's upstairs. Copy that. Need any help? Nah, I got this. Okay, I'll take a look around. He's just Brad, going right in. Keep it stealthy. There's one right there. Boom, got you. I'm in. Oh shit, I've been spotted. You good? Yep, got it. Just moving upstairs. Alright, let's see what we got. Okay, I got the intel on El Pozolero. He's in a camp up in San Mateo. Cool, how far is it? We well, could use a ride. You got a car out there? No, something better. <laughs> Ready to fly? Let's go. You got it. Oh, this is so cool. Look at this, man. <laughs> that is fucking awesome. Wow. The camp on the road. Where are you guys? Let me know you. <laughs> Damn, the whole place is going up. All right, I'm headed for the chopper now. Damn, he's trying to ram the car. I got to hit his engine. No, I'll try to slow him down. Nice. Way, guys. I'll run this train. <laughs> Where's the chopper? Where is it? I found it. Okay, getting in. I'm in the chopper. Coming your way. <coughs> All right, I'm on my way, guys. Hang tight. Oh no 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 no! He's not stopping. Oh man, come on, come on! I'm trying. Take his tires out. He's a tough one, this guy, huh? Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 we're not going to push him off. Like he's These guys are making a fucking meal of it. It's going to be down to you, mate. Damn it, he dodged it. Hang on, guys, I'm nearly there. Just kamikaze the oh, chopper. Okay, I got him, I got him, I got him. Yes, he stopped. I'll get him. Be careful. Ride's here. How'd you get, buddy? Hurry up, we got cartel reinforcements incoming. Up you get, and in you go. Adios. Let's get nice. the hell out of here. I got him in my line of fire. Well, hold him off. I gotta fly this thing. <laughs> and we 
We are clear, gentlemen. That's nice work. so that cool. Oh man, that was close. That's fucking awesome. Now, I'm really, really glad that they showed us a lot of gameplay of this. It looks gorgeous. Obviously, let's take this with a pinch of salt. It's a stage demo. Um, graphics were most likely upscaled. This isn't necessarily what we're going to see in the final game, but I wasn't really nitpicking at the graphics or anything like that. What I was looking at was the gameplay, the opportunities, and how I could see myself playing with my mates. And, oh my god, this is one to look out for. Uh, Ubisoft have a uh, kind of track record for constantly making these big open world games and I think it looks like they've done this one justice. Hopefully it, they haven't copy and pasted it from Far Cry and then just changed some of the, the foliage and things like that. I, it really looks like they've put a lot of effort into kind of how how the um, the open world looks and I think I think this one's going to be really exciting. I can't wait to, to get this. I know a few mates who will definitely Definitely jump in this with me and I'm really looking forward to less of that frantic division style third person gunplay and a bit more of that very slow tactical planning your route. Some people staying back, others going in. Love that. Can't wait to get stuck into that one. Um, next on the agenda. This will be the uh, division. <coughs> The statistics are staggering. Urban centers are oversaturated with violence. And the wave of criminal activity has overflowed to suburban and rural areas. Dissolution of moral structure, international conspiracies, a multi-billion dollar drug trade. No one knows the source, and authorities are helpless in stopping this epidemic of crime. Civilization is being pushed to the brink. To stem the rising tide of violence and re-establish order, extreme steps must be taken. The question becomes... Who will take them? Oh, shit! <laughs> it's not the division. Oh snap, that looks so much like the division there. <laughs> I'm Jason Schroeder from Ubisoft San Francisco. Uh, I had the team put together a trailer. We just took some stuff from Snowdrop and said, make cool trailer, and it, that's what it puts out. So. <laughs> What a franchise! You may have heard me say it in the um in the the reactions video, but what an absolutely smashing franchise for for Ubisoft to 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 get hold of, you know. And it's not like they're just buying the name. Um, Trey Parker and Matt Stone are actually involved in the game. They write it. They no doubt do all of the designs for it as well. And then they let the game developers jump in and um program the game and code it so we can actually play it. And it just looks brilliant. I love the South Park comedy. I was really, really gutted that I never got around to playing Stick of Truth because I, I bought my PS4 um, before that game came out and I just never really found the time to, to jump in and, and pick it up on my PS3. Dude, what the fuck? Who let this ordinary citizen into the cube layer? Uh, listen, bro, we are all superheroes and you aren't, so you can't hang out with us. Please do us all a solid and fuck up. <laughs> Device can blow up the entire Milky Way galaxy. Jesus, fuck! Mom! The new kid is trying to play with the cube of ultimate destruction! You be nice to all your friends, Eric. Be a good sharer. Good sharer? It'll blow up the fucking galaxy! Stupid <laughs> Look, dude, we already told you, you can't play. You aren't a superhero. You don't have a costume. You don't have any superpowers. We You're not restricted to a location anymore. Now you can move to get into tactical positions on your enemies. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> That's exactly what I just said. <laughs> you can push and pull enemies, <laughs> but they can also do it to you. Uh. That's you pretty cool. And get a little extra damage. You can knock them into other characters and get an extra attack. Wow. You can use some of your powers, like Tweak here, to get over <laughs> obstacles. Very cool. Like, it's so obviously using space. It adds that extra difference. level of strategy. Totally 
Next up is time. In the first game, your farts were legendary. Now your farts are so powerful that you can use them to rip the fabric of time itself. Like Ghost Recon. <laughs> <laughs> So, you can use that to rearrange the turn order. Mastering space and time makes a huge difference. I can't wait for you guys to get your hands on it. Let's bring it out with big volume. <laughs> um, there was also some virtual reality which we saw kind of thrown in there which I really really enjoyed they did this Star Trek um, bridge game bridge VR or bridge control or something like that and they brought in some some old characters from the, the previous generations of Star Trek and, and they, they kind of got them all round in play to test her limits and to prove her place among Starfleet's finest fuck me I route to a secret testing facility and are proceeding to our destination at maximum warp. I know somebody who will go ape shit over this. This is amazing! Wow! Absolutely astonishing. When I walked in, I really wasn't sure what I was actually walking into. Oh, legend! <laughs> Very cool. If I could have imagined what I would have wanted the Star Trek the VR game to be, this is it. This is. Oh, really he's got his. He's got an upgraded version of his visor. <laughs> Holy crap, this is amazing. I mean, it's really his breathtaking. That was an extraordinary experience to be fully. Where's Will Wheaton? They got to have him, surely. In a world. Whoa, not into that. <laughs> oh man. You're talking to each other and you're. Taking orders from the captain, and you're, I mean, it's, it's this is really just... cool. So there's captain, helm, yeah. the pilot in the ship, uh -huh. tactical, and the engineer routing power and charging warp coils. It's, it's like a fucking Enterprise simulator. Right, Prepare warp, take us out. Yes, Captain. <laughs> Quantum well, game playing is not new. I mean, you know, we can nice. play games with our friends, but there's something wow. different about Ultimate nerd fantasy right there. Here. Look at that playing. shit. You can look over and see the person and see them doing their job and talk to them. The team does not succeed unless everybody does their job well. Shift decloaking, activating shields. Okay, shields up. Shields up. I really did not want to uh, lower the shields. While we were under attack, I was very impressed by uh, LeVar playing that game today. He really had the language of Star Trek down. And they are transporting, Captain. <laughs> it's like, excuse me, put your buttons. Oh. I nailed being the engineer. <laughs> <laughs> that looks that so scary. cool. It's a Klingon. Red alert. Preparing to war. <laughs> we're under <laughs> attack. We have been waiting in anticipation for so long for the technology of virtual reality to catch up with where we imagine we should be and where we all want to go. Line us up for war, please. We have full power. Ensign, as soon as you can get us the hell out of here, I'd be most grateful. This was really incredible. Hull is down to 20%. Come on, y'all. Punch it. <laughs> as soon as you can. Here we go. Oh, wow. It's your own Star Trek experience in a virtual world where you can hang out and you're obviously only sat in your seat controlling one deal. part of the Enterprise, so that looks so cool. But again, is, is it co-op? You need four of those fucking VR headsets, man. <laughs> Star Trek Bridge Crew. I'll only be playing that one player for years before I even yes. consider getting a second Guys, so my mate can play with me. Or if he brings his over, I guess, but... VR a little ridiculous to expect maybe you to have a friend set up with four or five VR headsets in one room. You know, that's a, a little bit excessive. But it doesn't matter because it's going to be um, online. So you're going to be able to play it with your friends online still. And that might be pretty fun. I mean, that would be pretty cool if your mates are all in your houses. Yeah, you all get your VR headsets on if you have them, that is, and uh, you will feel like you're just sitting on the on the bridge of the Enterprise. It looked, um, the graphics looked a bit kind of like crappy, but I think this is gonna be expected for, for a lot of VR stuff.
I, it's one of the games that I would love to pick up and I really hope it comes to PlayStation VR. I think it's going to. Um, Aisha Tyler said that it will be coming to virtual reality platforms. So she didn't necessarily name a Vive or Rift or PSVR. So I'm kind of hoping that they're going to optimize that for, for consoles as well as the, uh, the PC VR um, guys. Brother. You... Are the raider. In the aftermath of war, your people were starving. You brought them back. And now, your fleet sails for the lands of the samurai in seeking plunder and glory. <laughs> he speaks with such passion. He loves what he does. Napoleon's war had taken us to the edge of extinction. But that raider reminded us of who we are. We would raid, but not Apollyon. Not yet. But they knew we were coming. He's like, oh, I wish they gave me a weapon. <laughs> That's a handy defense mechanism. <laughs> the gates of that fortress hadn't worked for a century. All we had to do was get through them. Whoa. Come on, bring it, bring it back out, big. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Christ, it sounds meaty. Definitely sounds like it packs a punch, which is interesting. Not Allah and Dynasty Warriors, just send 20 enemies flying in all directions. For honor. Oh. Great seeing some actual gameplay. We got to see a whole level. It was the single player campaign. Um, there was no multiplayer shown. I think they wanted to really show us that there, there is going to be single player in this game. It's not just going to be an online only game. Um, it kind of confirmed our, or it, it, it appeased our worries, I should say, about whether it's going to be a very fast-paced hack and slash and Dynasty Wars Warriors style game. I don't think this is going to be the case. You saw the combat, very heavy, very kind of, like, each each um, swing really packs a punch and a thud. It looks like it's going to be a bit slower pace and it's not going to be so much swinging an axe and then 20 enemies go flying. The, um... The the one on one combat looks very interesting. It looks like you have three sections to um, use on your stick, and then within those sections, that changes your stance and your weapon stance. So you have to match the enemy stance to to block correctly. And the guy looked like he was having a bit of a tough time. Anyway, the developer looked like he wasn't doing that well. So really stoked for this game. Um, I wasn't massively on the hype train. Uh, from last year's kind of show but after seeing this stuff in play really can't wait to pick this one up 
That raider showed us what Viking fury could do. The Great Raid, they would call it. And it had begun. 14th of Feb. <coughs> God, there's a lot of stuff coming out at the start of next year. And that's if this all this crap doesn't get pushed back. Not much if you are looking for Christmas for releases. So, we saw some Watchdog stuff. Um, I'm not going to go into massive details about this because, frankly, uh, I don't know where this game came from. People really seem to enjoy it, I guess, and the, the market is there for it, but the first Watch Dogs never really interest me. I never really bothered picking it up. I know it kind of was met with a lot of criticism and uh, mediocrity, I guess. Like, it was it was a very, very mediocre game, and, like, I don't, I don't see why the second will be any different. To anybody watching the trailers, to anybody thinking that that's what the game's going to look like, Please stop. You know how these things go. This wasn't a trailer. Well, at least the CG trailer wasn't designed to show you what, what the gameplay is going to be like. That is all cinematics. The game is going to look nothing like that. Calm down and don't go onto the forums and start whining when you get a watered down version of what that game is. Because I'm not saying it's going to be a bad thing. I'm just saying that sometimes I think disappointment can come from people's expectations being too high and and unrealistic i think sometimes you can create your own annoyingness you can you can get annoyed because you expected something and you had such high expectations from it which were unrealistic and then the game comes out it's it doesn't look anything like you expected and you get disappointed and you start bitching about it let's just take a chill pill with watchdogs to see what they're gonna do and then we'll take it from there people <laughs> Hot damn, this guy's a fucking ninja. Where the hell did he train? Yeah, Holy fuck, this is awesome. You can move your guys later, man. Because we are just getting started. <laughs> and wow, they ended it on an absolute corker. Um for me personally, if somebody was going to come to me and say, out of every game you saw in E3, we will give you one right now. You can have it released today, the full copy in all its glory. What game would you like? And I, I have to admit, it was a toss-up between Resident Evil 7, as you would have seen in my Sony reactions. But I think this one takes it. Um, biggest surprise of E3 was not expecting this at all. I don't think a lot of people were. They really kept it under wraps. And it just looks stunning. I really cannot wait to get jumped into this. If this is like just the game equivalent of Art of Flight, I am I'm sold. Give me the pre-order. It's got GoPros, it's got Red Bull, it's going to be extreme sports. Oh man, I've got so many goosebumps right now. In case you haven't heard, I fucking love snowboarding. Huge snowboarder. Oh snap. Am I scared? We've got the Aravis Ranch, the region we come from, where Ubisoft and C stands. In Steep, we developed a really cool observation tool. We call it Mountain View. Mountain oh. View allows you to zoom out from your position, observe the world, and navigate into the environment. Shit. Our mountain range will be populated by drop zones. Drop zones are entry points for you to drop in the world when you're ready. This looks unbelievable. A no, freestyle. Our initial position. A freestyle playground. Besides up in the mountains. Zones, the game will offer a wide range of challenges. Oh, and you can call in snowboards. The one in front and of us is a wingsuit activity. And as the other player drops in, we'll follow him and trigger the challenge. This is a proximity flying race challenge. Sponsored by GoPro. It's got GoPro and Red Bull written all over it. <laughs> I'm in love with this game already. I don't even have to see any of this shit. 
Oh my god. Couple this with VR. Oh snap. If they announce that this is going to be VR compatible, I don't think it will, but... Fuck me. Just... Oh, can you see the possibilities? Just... It's like Skate. God, I'm gutted EA didn't announce Skate 4. <laughs> Unlucky, mate. I'm gutted EA did not announce Skate 4 because it was such a cool, realistic, just down to just the, secure the silver medal and we, learn, game. we could choose we could choose or move uh, onto skiing in the Aiguille. But we'd like to introduce you to another region. Um I could talk about it till the cows come home, enjoy the uh my reactions of it and get stoked for this game guys. Get stoked for this game. But that was it. What did you guys think of the um, Ubisoft conference? Did you enjoy it? Did you think it went on a bit too long? We did get some uh, talk about Assassin's Creed. Nothing about games. Just uh, one of the directors or something like that. Cinemato cinematographers came out and spoke uh, for about... 10 minutes to be honest about the film and all this other stuff and they were trying to really hype it up but I'm looking forward to that we'll, we'll have to see how it goes um yeah drop a comment like and subscribe and I will see you on the next show